To take beautiful pictures with your smartphones, it's actually kind of simple. And today we are condensing our personal method to a total of 5 easy steps. So let's go! So before we begin, these 5 steps that we are showing right here may change and may vary from what you are seeing on your phone because we are only using the Galaxy Z Flip today because of its beautiful hinge design and whatnot. And you can check out our review of the Z Flip at the top right corner there. But all of these 5 steps, essentially, they apply to every single camera out there. So the first step here is to understand the pillars of photography. We have 3 pillars right here. The first one is aperture. For smartphones, it is always locked and there's only one aperture for each camera and it is fixed. Number 2, we have the ISO which is the sensitivity. So if you bump up the ISO a lot, then you will get a lot more noise as well. So we try to keep them as low as possible. And lastly is the shutter speed. It is also known as the exposure time. So if you don't want motion blur, it is best to keep it as low as possible. But you have to bump up your ISO and that's where the balancing act starts to kick in. And that leads us to the second step, which is a tripod. Usually I would recommend getting a tripod for your smartphone or your camera wherever you go because the tripod is just way too helpful and I cannot trust my hands because my hands are shaky. So the Z Flip is kind of special because of this hinge. You can lock it into whatever angle you want and it still is stable. However, this phone is kind of slippery as you can see here. So what I recommend is just using a piece of rubber band right here. I just have a stack of them on my table right here because it is useful. I just put it on the table or any other surfaces and then I put the phone on top. Now it doesn't really move that much and it doesn't slide off the table on its own. And with this, we already made a tripod out of the Galaxy Z Flip. And that leads us to point number 3 which is to frame the shot because it is kind of funky. If you point your camera like this or maybe like this or even flipped inverted like this, the camera is in different positions and your picture will turn out very differently. So this is where framing comes into play and planning your shots is also very important. For me specifically, what I always do is that I would like a landscape shot. So I will put it like this or like this, just on its sides anyway. And depending on which area of the subject that I want to capture, I can reposition whenever I want. And of course, this also applies to every other smartphone out there because a tripod with a ball head, you can actually readjust and point it wherever you want as well. Step number four, head on to your pro mode or expert mode or manual mode, whatever you want to call it, and tune your ISO all the way to the lowest and then increase your exposure time. So you have to experiment according to whatever lighting situation that you are in. And if you want to focus to some other parts of the picture, you can do that via manual focus. And the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip does have green bands to show you which part of the picture is in focus. And I find that to be really useful. Xiaomi also has this kind of feature and they are too doing a really good job in terms of manual focusing overall. And if you want to take your picture in raw format as well, then head on to the settings menu and enable that option. And once you're happy with the exposure, the framing and whatnot, then you can start taking your picture. Just hit that shutter button and then your image will be taken. And here comes step number 5. Maybe you do not like the colors that come out of it. Maybe you don't like the contrast, the sharpness, the vibrancy and whatnot. And that is where if you enable taking pictures in raw format, it comes in handy. So you can head on to an app like Snapseed for example, and then load up your raw image in the app itself and then you can start customizing however you want it to look. And you can also apply filters and whatnot to make it pop even more. For me, I'm just going to set the white balance, the colors, the vibrancy, the contrast, and I'm done. Sometimes whenever I frame it properly, I took the picture, the exposure is correct, but the image just turns out kind of meh and not the way I want it to be. So what I truly recommend is to imagine how you want a picture to turn out and then backtrack how you should take the picture in terms of framing in terms of the exposure, the lighting and everything else. So yeah, you can achieve your final product much more easier that way around. And of course, you should also experiment with different types of photography as well. For example, if you want to do light painting, then just set your ISO to the lowest in a very dark environment and your exposure time to let's just say 30 or 40 seconds. And then you can start using a flashlight to do light painting as well. And 
photography is a very fantastic world. You can literally just put whatever random objects at it. And then for some reason, if you have the creativity to do so, you can create some interesting pictures and that is just wonderful. And with these five steps, you can start taking pictures with your smartphones, which will turn out magnificently. So that is all we have to say about manual photography using your smartphone, which I promise will turn out great. And if you have any questions, do leave them down in the comment section below. We will try to help you out if you have any questions or doubts. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.